Howdy there, Elden Ring ding dongers. Uh, we're doing some Dark Souls 1 PvP. You ever played Dark Souls 1? You should play Dark Souls 1. It's the best one. It's the best one, Dark Souls 1. Uh, I've been I've been uh, doing some Dark Souls 1 invasions, and now you get to see them. Look at them go. Usually, around this time of year, around Halloween, I play Bloodborne uh, as a, just a little treat for myself. And uh, after I do, I'll do a challenge run of Bloodborne. And after I do a little challenge run in Bloodborne, uh, I will play through the game with the build, and I will have people who are watching my stream invade me. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's also a little hectic because Bloodborne's netcode um, is is really wonky. So sometimes, a lot, you know, people end up not being able to get in to my world, uh, no matter how much you know they're trying or how much I'm trying. Uh, it just seems like they're like these internet gods that, you know, they'll, they'll keep certain people invading uh, and other people uh, won't be able to make it in. And so, uh, you know, what ends up happening is uh, it's a lot of fun, but it has like some internet issues. And that's always been a Halloween thing. Um, but this year I decided to do something different. Uh, I've, I've discovered that the anniversary of my Twitch partner thing um, was in November, and it was in the, you know, like November 22nd or something like that. And so I thought, well, okay, uh, you know, we could do like a Thanksgiving thing and do Dark Souls 1 this year instead of doing a Halloween thing and doing Bloodborne. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I have a lot to be thankful about. Uh, this year, I got a I got a raise from Twitch, and that was pretty cool. And then I get, you know, I, I I didn't know that my partner anniversary was in November. That was something that I had never paid attention to. Um, it was just something that Twitch happened to send me an email about this year. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's do, I haven't played Dark Souls one in a minute, and I love Dark Souls one. When I was doing the Bloodborne PvP thing. A lot of it was, uh, a lot of it was, uh, the, the desire to get people to try Bloodborne PvP, because, like, one person, um, well, not one person, but, like, big streamers and, and big content creators, uh, on, on YouTube and on Twitch were like, oh yeah, Bloodborne PvP is bad, um, and so... People just started saying it, right? And don't get me wrong, there is a lot of stuff that is bad about Bloodborne PvP, but there's no good PvP. There is no good from software PvP. There's there's just the one you trick yourself into thinking is good because you like it the most. None of them are good. Demon Souls is bad, Dark Souls is bad, Dark Souls 2 is bad. Dark Souls 3 PvP is bad. Elden Ring PvP is bad. They're all bad. Alright? There's just the one you like. And that's the one you tell people it's good. But it's not. It's not good. It's a janky mess. It's a janky mess. It's what it is. Be honest. Anyway. Uh, Bloodborne is no more a janky mess than anything else. Um, and it is a janky mess, but I love it, and, and it's a lot more fun than people give it credit for because they've never tried it, because they've heard it's bad. Okay, Dark Souls 1 is another one of those, where people are like, oh, it's just a backstab fest, and it is, it is, if you play it that way. Um, you're gonna see, in this invasion, my opponent is, he's just gonna, he's gonna go for a lot of backstabs by circle strafing me. Okay? And, and this is... I am convinced that this is what people, uh, you know, have in their head. This man is going to circle strafe me. And when he circle strafes me, he leaves me no choice but... Well, I mean, I have a choice, I guess. When this dude circle strafes me, the obvious choice for me is to circle strafe him back 
and backstab him instead. All right? And if you don't understand latency, and all you understand is that you are trying to circle strafe your opponent and then you wound up getting backstabbed, if that's the only thing you understand, right, like, then it's going to look like, oh, it's just laggy backstabs, right? But, like, you are literally, like, asking to get backstabbed when you lock onto your opponent and then circle strafe at them. Like, the, the easiest solution to dealing with that, so the easy solution to do in, is to do what I just did there, all right? And uh, so don't do that. That's not, as, that's not as good as you think it is. Stop doing it. You have, to, you have to stop. You have to figure out a new thing to do because that is a terrible idea. And then people will get mad that they got backstabbed because they were doing that. All right. So anywho, um, the Bloodborne thing. I, I used to do it, uh, and I will do it again in the future. But uh, it was kind of like, a, one, I enjoy it, and two, it's nice to give people a chance to try out Bloodborne PvP. And now that Elden Ring is out and, you know, goes crazy with the damage and everything, um, I thought, yeah, well, hell, why not? We could do Dark Souls. We could do Dark Souls 1 and give people to give this a chance. Um, why not? Right? You've, you've probably fought against a million Moon Veils, haven't you? So, if you've fought against a million Moon Veils, you've seen how much damage that can do. All right. Well, now just imagine if every weapon had the ability to do that much damage by getting a backstab instead of an Ash of War, right? Because that's essentially what we're talking about here. You're going to get a crazy amount of burst damage with a backstab if you choose to do that. And you can see I'm just goofing off, you know? I'm just goofing off with my, with my opponents here, just sort of playing around and, and having a good time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm using a raw, infused, balder side sword. My damage is ass. Uh, and if I wanted to, you know, there's a million other weapons I could use that would be better uh, and would win invasions faster. But I'm not trying to use the best stuff and I'm not trying to win invasions fast. I'm trying to goof off and have a silly little time. And that's what I'm doing, right? And, uh, and it's fun. I, and I love it. I was actually surprised at how active Dark Souls 1 is. From like level 30 to like level 50, it's popping, baby. It's popping. Like, there is so much stuff you can do. Dark Souls invasion wise, uh, you can do Sin's Fortress, which I love. You can do the Depths. You can do Blight Town. You can do An Orlando. Um, it's it's great. Love it. Uh, was actually really really surprised and then the game gets a little bit slower you know from 60 to 90 um, it was it's a little harder to find invasions but uh, yeah the the level 30 40 50 range like you can do great there anyway my weapon is, is not really great however the point of this video I guess I should get to it is uh yeah I'm doing a Dark Souls thing this year so uh, for the week of November the 27th, uh, I'll be I'll be doing a dried finger run and uh, playing with people on Twitch. Uh, you can you can come invade me in Dark Souls One, uh, and you can co-op with me if you want to. Um, I would I would I would encourage you to use something cool and fun, um, and because that's what uh, other people are going to be using. Uh, but if you want to show up and be a, a, a meta hog, uh, you know, if you want to be a big pig, you can also do that as well. Um, that's also uh, available to you, should you choose that. Um, you know? But, uh, yeah, it'll be a good time. I'm going to start playing the game at level 90 in New Game Plus. Uh, people can, like, co-op with me or invade me. Um people can Gravelord me, which is a, a covenant that makes the enemies in the game harder for other players, uh, which is a sick idea that From Software should bring back. 
Um, I might I might do a little grave lording myself as I play through the game, and that way I can have blues invading me as well as reds invading me, and we can just get some all-out shenanigans going on. That could be fun. Uh, have some red versus blues versus everybody type thing. But uh, yeah, it'll be a good time, and um, I, and I look forward to doing it. So yeah, I I, I mentioned earlier uh, a couple weeks ago, I made a video talking about how I would like to start streaming on YouTube as well as Twitch. Uh, I, I can stream to both at the same time with the new rules that Twitch has, which is awesome. But it's a more difficult thing. I thought it was just going to be like, okay, I'm streaming to both, but like, no, it's a whole thing. Like, I have to download a, a plug-in, and I have to update uh, the program that I use to stream. Um, so, like, it's a it's a whole thing that I have to figure out. I still intend on trying to figure it out, but uh, I didn't realize it was going to be an ordeal. I thought it was just going to be like a, okay, touch of a button type thing, but it's not. Um, I should probably ask Oro or Peeve or somebody who does it. Uh, what the name of the plugin is that I need to get and how to install that and everything else. But, uh, yeah. So for right now, I'm still streaming on Twitch. Uh, I'm Central Time in the U.S. My streams usually start around 11 a.m. or noon. Um, and I usually stream until uh, 10 or 11 p.m. So, anytime the week of November the 27th. If you want to swing by and check out some Dark Souls PvP stuff, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be going on. Also, if you've never done Dark Souls PvP and you'd like to give it a shot, uh, there will probably be people hanging out um, who might be able to, to help you make a build real quick, uh, like drop you some items uh, to level up to level 90. Um, I'm going to be leveling up as I play through the game. Uh, just for funsies. Uh, I'm just kind of curious uh, what New Game Plus will be like. I'm going to start it at 90 and then... I mean, I've done New Game Plus before, but not like this. I'm going to start at 90 and then level up as I get the opportunity to. So, uh, people who don't have level 90 builds but do have builds that are higher level than that would be able to join in. Um, and the people who have 90s can just level their 90s up if they want to uh, and join in. Uh, or continue to, to play. But, uh, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun, and I look forward to it. And, um, I really like Dark Souls 1 PvP. This is not PvP that was... I never pl I never did this when it was new and exciting and everything. Um, I never did Dark Souls 2 when it was new and exciting. Well, that's not true. I, I didn't do Dark Souls 2 much when, uh, when it was just, you know, just coming out. Um, I did it a little bit, but not a whole lot. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh, he's, it's just nostalgia. He's just going down. It's not, it's, it's really not. My, my first real uh, experience with Dark Souls PvP was when this remaster came out, and I loved it. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's fun. It's goofy, it's silly, it's simple, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about it. I'm about it. And if I can get other people uh, an opportunity to, to try it out and be about it, then... You know, I'm absolutely going to. Because you should. Some of you are probably looking at this right now and you're like, uh oh, oh my gosh, he's blue. He's a blue guy. Yeah, blue guys in Dark Souls 1 and half the time in Dark Souls 2. Uh, blue guys are just invaders. They just invaded people. Uh, in this case, I'm a blue guy who is invading these people who are hanging out in the forest. And uh, that's one thing the blues did. They would invade people who hung out in the forest. 
Uh, another thing that blue guys would do is they would invade people who hung out in uh, another part of the game if they had killed a particular NPC uh, and or a particular boss they would get invaded for as long as they hung out in that area. So blues were kind of like the, the protectors of certain areas or whatever. And um, they could also just straight up invade anybody anywhere if that person had killed NPCs or done invasions and killed a lot of people uh, as an invader. Blues could also invade those people. And uh, it wasn't... Dark Souls 2 uh, operated similarly, uh, except half the time, Blues could just be, like, the police, the invasion police, who showed up mid-invasion to try and stop an invader. And then in Dark Souls 3, they became just outright uh, police officers, whose job it was to show up and uh, try and kill invaders mid invasion but yeah uh, these these guys just hanging out in the woods and doing their thing uh, they 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 absolutely ganked my ass a couple of times so it was nice to get my revenge here I guess I guess giant dad gave up uh, my damage is awful and, and you could see, I, I was using a, a different Balder side sword there. The one I'm using right now is raw. And it's basically just like, haha, I'm having fun with random uh, people. And then against the gankers, I had like the chaos infused Balder side sword, which is, uh, it, does, it does a little more damage. Um, not a lot, but, you know, a little bit. I've also got the, the, the sweet pyromancies that I love so much because they don't they don't require any stats other than attunement. And attunement just gives you spell slots. It's how you unlock having spell slots. So you need attunement to get spell slots, and then you need faith to cast miracles, and you need intelligence to cast sorceries. Pyromancy doesn't need anything other than that. And then what you do is you upgrade your pyro glove, your your, your pyro flame, sort of like it's a, a, a catalyst, like it's a staff or whatever. You upgrade that, and that's where your damage comes from with pyromancies. And so, like, I've got Black Flame and Fire Tempest on this build. And Black Flame does less damage than a spell that is very similar to it, Great Combustion. It does less damage, but it, it does more poise damage. So it will stagger people more reliably if they're wearing, you know, heavier armor. You can absolutely poise through uh, Black Flame, but it's it's uh, it requires more poise than Great Combustion. And then Fire Tempest is just a sort of like I throw fire everywhere on the ground and uh, burn O Flame from Elden Ring if you're familiar. It's, it's a bit like that, uh, and I love it. more forest invasions and these guys these guys do the thing where they're they're just they're honorable 1v1 fighters you know uh, they're just fighting one at a time 1v1 having having fun you know uh, not doing not ganking just uh, chilling out you know being super honorable until you start winning too much and then uh, they aren't honorable 1v1 fighters anymore. Once you start winning too much, that's when they that's when they decide that uh, now you have to fight the other guy. Now you have to fight the other guy. So, okay, if that's how it's going to be, I'm not a, I'm not allowed to win, right? That's not allowed. So now we're going to fight the other guy. He's using the uh, the dragon tooth. It is a literal dragon's tooth. And, uh, you know, 
you'll notice I'm, I'm usually not wearing the Hornet ring. My, uh, my backstabs, my reposts, they don't do a lot of damage. Um, against the other gankers in the woods that we fought earlier, I was absolutely wearing the Hornet ring because uh, they did insane amounts of damage compared to me, and they took no damage from me. So they did way more damage than me, and uh, they didn't they didn't take any damage. But uh, these guys, you know, they're they're you know sure they're ganking, yeah, but uh, they're they're still not you know they don't know exactly what's they they don't know as much as my other opponents did, right? So we'll we'll keep it chill with them. Uh, this I think, yeah, this is maybe the greatest verticality that I got this past week. Look at this. Got to, we got to line it up just right. Verticality. It's when you take advantage of the fact that you are above your opponent. That's what it is. Taking advantage of the verticality of the level. This fella here, this fella here, maybe not him so much, but, but his friend, his friend is a big, tough man. A big, strong boy. And so, uh, you know, I, I know he's a big, strong boy because he has a little symbol next to his head. That little symbol next to his head means that he has been password summoned. And that symbol indicates, see that little blue thing over him? That indicates that he is not within the typical level range of multiplayer for us. He is outside of that range, which means he is going to be, uh, he's going to have a million hit points. He can potentially do a million damage. He can have it all. He could be level 600, for all I know. He's not, but he could be. So I'm absolutely slapping on the Hornet ring for this bad boy. There ain't no way you're getting away. See, so people are like, oh, it's a backstab fest. This is an example of the backstab fest. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going all out against that guy. He's gonna, he's gonna get the backstab fiesta, right? Because I need the backstab fiesta in order to win against a guy that's higher level than me and everything else. So yeah, we we gotta keep it going, keep it going full steam. Too sweet to be sour, too nice to be me. On the tough guy styles, I'm not too keen, but you know I will do it. I will be mean if you have that symbol. Anyway, thanks for watching. Come hang out on Twitch. Let's play Dark Souls. See you next time. Later, y'all.